we looked back at the other ones that we had made. Like I really hope the next word that comes out of his mouth is not Xeno threat. Please don't be Xeno threat. Please, buddy, do not say Xeno threat in the next five seconds. I swear. Xeno threat. No! God damn it! <laughs> so, let's do it. Missions in video games are more than just a way to tell a story or give a player things to do. They're also a way to drive players to explore areas they might otherwise miss, to encounter aspects of gameplay they might otherwise not attempt. And for developers, they're often a way to push the development of new features, or in the parlance of the mission feature team, new verbs for yep. their systemic mission design system. And one new mission or global event from MFT can lead to 10 others being created by designers on sandbox teams around the world. So on today's show, we're exploring two currently being developed, starting with Data Heist. Ooh, okay. Data Heist. So what, MSR? Are we going to get some star so running? Data Heist is a brand new mission coming to the Star Citizen Persistent Universe. It will be one of the first missions from the organization of Bit Zero. Bit Zero are an organization of hackers. They're kind of rich kids that have kind of taken on the hobby of hacking um, and trying to almost be in Robin Hood. Um, they want to do things, but they're, again, they're a bunch of rich kids. They don't know, you know, ripping off a merchant for such such amount of money is even a big thing for that merchant. So the okay. player will take the mission, head to the location. In this case, we are using the UGFs. I love that ship. I want the Herald. Yeah, the, the N7 the facility, Mass Effect hoodie. You'll have to gain access to the mainframe. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I like already and about this? They're showing footage from the PU. And they're actually... So do you know what I mean? You can tell it's PU footage and not some like private server because the AI are still just as janky as ever. I mean, look at... <laughs> <laughs> what a freeze frame. But look at this. <laughs> look, look at the Once AI here. The staring at a wall. You'll look at that. To gain yeah. access to the That's how you know they're on the PU and they're not playing on some like private like marketing server. So at least they're staying true to what the game will actually be like when it's out. Now you can do that in multiple ways. Uh, we have hacking still in the in the PU where you mm. can use a crypto key. And there's also other methods that might be at the location that will help you access those mainframes, but I'll leave that for you to find. Once you've hacked into there, you then have to allow the, the, the hacker into the system. And then from that point on, cool. he will okay. do all of the heavy lifting with the uploading of the, the data from the servers. But what you have to do is maintain the safety of those servers so that their upload can actually... So, listen, it's cool, but it's, it's no different than... The tiger tooth tiger tooth it's no different than clearing your crime stat or what the clearing your crime stat used to be so we all thought that they were moving the missions from the crime stats in the various locations on planets so that security post tiger claw that's it tiger tooth what am i saying tiger tooth's my freaking knife in cs um they're so they're, they're quite clearly moving away from the reason they moved from the looks of things the reason they moved all of the crime stat clearing access to Korea and only Korea is so that they can make room for these missions, which I'm assuming will be in the exact same locations, like the security posts that were on the planets. Um, but it looks the same. It looks exactly the same mission, but right? you plug in a data chip, it will be something other than the Tiger Claw, something else that you'll get from this mission. And then you have to plug it in and defend it from... I mean, the only difference is it's not just players. AI will turn up and try and stop you. So it's basically a horde mode with AI instead of other players. And I'm assuming other players will come as well. Which, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's good that we have something new, but it's not new, if that makes sense. Like, it's 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 not new. ...follow through. We will then start to give you a couple of enemies populating the area because they're responding to, you know, your invasion of their property. Mm -hmm. They'll come in and you'll fight them. At the same time, there's going to be... Players? ...the owners of those servers. Although they're not on site, they actually have the ability to remote into their systems and they're probably not very happy with the idea that you're trying to steal their data. During the mission, you okay. will find that some of these servers will start to overheat. Now that's cool. because the people that own the location are deciding we can't kick out this hacker from the location. Okay. But we can try and either halt you or you know stop you from getting the data. They turn off the cooling on these servers. And so when the cooling's turned off, they're basically trying to melt down their servers. Right, okay, so you've got to stop the, the cooling. So okay, cool, so a bit of extra to do. 
state to destroy their data, then there you have it. You then have to look around the area, try and solve why they're overheating, and if you can try and stop that, that will be one of the big situations during this mission. Okay. It basically just continues like that. You have a certain amount that you're supposed to have uploaded, and you need to defend them, and then you have to turn them back on, and it, it just continues like this until you either succeed or you <laughs> fail. Yeah. Bit Heist is a okay. mission for morally okay. grey people. I wouldn't ever say that it was for the good or the bad in its first... So, as you say, it's not really anything different from the regular bunkers or drug destruction. It's the same loot with Crypto Key instead. I like the whole server meltdown thing, though. That's a new element they haven't done before. I'm guessing they can't do more interesting stuff as the AI can't function. As, yeah, the server tick rates and the AI being a bit janky. There's only so much they can really do at the moment with the missions. It's nice to have something new, though. Like, I know it's not new, really, but it is. Like, it's different. To, uh, different enough that we can enjoy it as a separate entity. Um, it's it's essentially clearing your crime stat, but AI turn up to stop you rather than relying on other players. Because how many times have we cleared our crime stat and players don't turn up and there's no extra gameplay there? We're just like, oh, watching out the windows in case anyone comes, but no one ever comes, right? It's it's essentially that, but with um, AI. So I, I do like the idea of it, like the horde mode and then the whole server overheating and like the owners of the servers trying to stop you from getting in there and melting down their own servers. I, I like that. I think it's smart. Do I necessarily think it's, like, revolutionary? No. I mean, as you say, Maker, I think they're limited to what they can do. Uh, I don't even think that the servers on the ships will hold the data. I heard the data will be physical, so probably the Tiger Claw. Yeah, I wish the... I, I, when they first said this, I was like, oh, yes, the MSR is getting some form of a mission. Uh, it's not, sadly. Scorched Earth, if they can't save the data being taken. Nice, yeah, I like that. I do like that. It's a little bit more varied... Um, but why they say bunkers again? I guess they haven't built any other new ones. Give us a building or something. A corp, uh, a corpo HQ. Yeah, a, a HQ would be cool. Like a building on the surface rather than a bunker. I agree, Mako. It'd be cool. But then they'd have to build that. Do they want to waste time building something for specifically for a mission that they might take away? Like Pyro is going to have some different stations. Yeah, I, I get what you mean, Mako. It'd be cool if they had something like a big facility on the, on the surface, kind of like... Um, kind of like the prison i guess but a bit more on the uh, uh, yeah i agree i do wish there was something a bit more with it after three to four missions it would get repetitive yeah but that that's why there's so many missions to do that you don't have to do the same thing over and over again right in star citizen you can that's the that's the beauty of it there's freedom to do what you want first implementation you will be infiltrating security locations security ugfs Mm -hmm. So at this point in time, it is unlawful. It's nice. a defend a thing mission. Oh God! But we're adding some more interesting lore and complexity to this this mission, where it's not just defending something from taking damage. We're adding this extra layer of gameplay for a player. It's, it's how they can be destroyed. It's adding extra layers. So it's not just a physical destruction. It's also this uh, concept of the data on this server being destroyed. So we wanted to take these two things and, and have them in one. My favorite thing about the mission is possibly the... I, I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to burst a bubble because obviously they, they, they've enjoyed what they've done. But the way that they're talking about the mission is like they've reinvented the wheel and I just don't feel like it, it is that. There's a button to press to stop the calling from turning off by the looks of things you have to just click enable that i mean i know it adds the element of oh you're shooting oh quickly gerald go and switch the that go and switch the server calling back on quick and gerald's like okay you keep shooting there jeff or whatever right there's these two people that are doing this but i i get what they're doing and yeah kitten i think you've nailed it that's the marketing talking i i i really understand it and i guess if you're the team that's being tasked with making these missions at the moment and you've got to deal with the state of the game in its current state, I guess there's only so much you can do. And they're probably like, well, you asked for a new mission and this is all we can do with the current AI and the current bunkers underground. Because those servers have been there for ages. I'm hoping, I'm hoping to God that this is a step towards things like the MSR coming in. What's up, Thomas? How you doing, buddy? Welcome on in. What's up, bud? Let, 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 we'll see. Let's continue. Things that it could open doorways for. The fact that it's the first mission for the Bit Zero is super exciting for me. I'm a fan I like of that. other the Bit Zero games thing. that involve hacking, and having an entire organization revolving hacking is. 
sorry to pause it again. I get it. And uh, look, listen, it's great. But saying you're a fan of like hacking in video games and saying that you, you're you really excited to have this hacking feature and then ha- having it be no more than insert data card or whatever it's going to be and click go. Like that's where I'm like, well, how hard would it be to create a mini game that you have to play on the thing? So, you know, you've got one person that's taking their time to actually do some hacking. Do you know what I mean? Like some kind of actual gameplay min, min, you know mini game that happens to start the hacking even if it's like before the ai turn up and try and stop you some form of mini game built in would be a little bit more impressive in my opinion than clicking a button and ai just spawning i don't know it feels very hollow but again i don't want to talk, i don't want to take wind out of their sails because i'm sure it's it's been a lot of fun to put i mean look, we haven't played it yet right i'm looking talking face value from what they're showing but I feel like they're sort of overselling what it actually is. It's super exciting for me. The mission feature team's uh, role isn't just to make new missions. It's also to make uh, the tools that uh, content teams will take on and, and give new life to. One of such way in yeah. Data Heist, for example, is a module that's focusing on randomization they will target um, a random server in the room just to get you moving around the the UDF so that it keeps you on your toes during the mission. But this can be utilized by other designers for powering anything to do with randomization as well. Am I right in saying there's only one server room though in these bunkers at the moment? Spawn because it's been at the same time, you know, five minutes in or anything like that. Uh, You could be kept on your toes. And with a mission like Data Heist, that gives us several new tools in the toolbox. (laughs) <laughs> yeah nice nice and in addition to the standard missions the- sorry but they sound moving around isn't it it's only one server room so there's only like and they're all in a row it's not like there's five server rooms dotted around you have to run back and forth and fight your way to each server room well as far as we're aware anyway the bunkers that are, exist at the moment which it looks like there's, there's one anyway the populate the verse the mission feature team is always examining and reevaluating the global events that run throughout the year Do they perform the way we intend they should? Not just in frame rate, but also in engagement, enjoyment, enchantment, entertainment. And if they're not, perhaps they need enhancement or extinguishment. And the new global event Blockade Runner hopes to be just a little bit of both. Blockade Runner actually replaces uh, Ninetales Lockdown. We analyzed Ninetales Lockdown and we looked at participation in that global event. And we also looked at what players did in it. So participation in Ninetales Lockdown wasn't actually that high. I uh, yeah. realized like there's no point maintaining this global event if no one plays it, you know? We looked back at the other ones that we had made. Like, I really hope the next word that comes out of his mouth is not Xeno Threat. Please don't be Xeno Threat. Please, buddy, do not say Xeno Threat in the next five seconds. I s- I s- Xeno threat. And no! God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> no one wants Xeno threat anymore. It doesn't work. It is buggy as heck. It does not work. It sucks, dude. It brings Star Citizen servers to its knees. Dead Leader. Dead Leader made a fantastic video about how they could what they should do with Xeno threat. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a link to in, in the chat in a second or in the description to this video because i'll probably do this as a react video dead leader made a fantastic video about why xeno threat sucks and what they could do to fix it they need to do that it doesn't work in the current game maybe in the future it will be great but it, it brings star citizen to its knees it makes it unplayable the database the database that chris spoke about in his spectrum post it brings that to the ground buddy it doesn't work the, it, it, the frames are low there's rubber necking, there's lag, there's f- things popping in and out. Everything breaks with Xeno Threat. Every time they do it, it sucks. Stop doing Xeno Threat unless you're using it to stress test. I love the idea of the event, but the execution is not great. And as I said, Dead Leader made a great video. But let's move on. He said Xeno Threat. I said don't say Xeno Threat because <laughs> we all know how bad that is. Players do engage with and they enjoy and that was the aspect of going on did i say rubber necking i meant rubber banding sorry <laughs> those wrecks in xeno threat 
picking up the crates and delivering them. They enjoy this experience. They yeah, enjoy phase working two. together as Phase two's grid. So phase two's very good. What can we do with that and Get make rid of a it. new event? Something that uh, players will instantly like understand what, what the event's about. We came up with this idea of a uh, blockade runner. Blockade Runner is a new global event that we've been working on. In mm -hmm. this event, there's a criminal faction that sets a blockade around some of the space stations in the universe. Cool. This makes trade and travel between these stations problematic. Mm -hmm. And their goal in doing this is to prevent the trade of one specific material that is important for the refinement of spaceship fuel. Cool. The idea is that a player will be called to help deliver a new commodity that is involved in the production of quantum fuel. Awesome. And deliver it from our LEO stations, uh, like Everest Harbor, to its uh, refinery sister stations. And we have to deliver. Okay, this is really cool. CIG, if you ever watch this, please, please, please make sure that the quantum fuel at the station that they're blockading or other, or any station in maybe like. A however million mile radius i don't know maybe you know maybe within i don't know whatever whatever radius we want you want to select but make all of them have less quantum fuel so this event if they're blockading the resource that's being used around stanton to make quantum fuel make the quantum fuel low at stations especially the stations where the event is at the event where the event's happening make it empty so players can't even jump away from there if they're out of quantum fuel then they're forced to take part in the event to bring it back. It, 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 don't just have it as a, a bit of background law like this is stopping quantum fuel being made, but in reality, it doesn't change anything. Like if you want people to play your missions, I don't want to say you have to force them into it, but you kind of have to force them into it just a little bit. Deliver a certain amount of this within a certain narrow... It's, it's worth it for the law. It's worth it for the law. It's short half-life, so if it's not stored properly at a specific facility, then it will expire and become worthless, and you'll have to try again. When you arrive at the LEO, there'll be like a blockade from criminals, and you will have to get through that blockade, land, buy this commodity as much as you can fit on your ship. Cool. Then you'll have to take off. Cool. And then you'll have to brave the blockade again. Cool. And then QT to one of the refineries. Okay. On this way, is cool. You may be interdicted by this is cool. Uh, more of these criminals who yes. don't want you to get away. I love it. So, and so you have to have a cargo ship with wingmen or a multi-crew ship like a Carrick. I love it. The love other it. Side, blockade, but you'll have to get through that. Then you will land, and then you will sell. Awesome. So, especially for twelve point eight million loop for players. Not every ship will be best suited for dealing with these guys without. You know some escorts so the idea that, that is sick players will also take this mission and support those other players uh, in combat ships Maybe love it you delegate one person with a, a big tanker ship and others to fend off any enemies along the way yep this is this is awesome for blockade runner is a combination of the cargo transport and selling and yep. space combat yep you've nailed it You've absolutely nailed it. That is awesome. Like that is sick. Star Citizen is the space combat. I've never really been much of an FPS player. But I love I do both. Like space combat. And one of the big elements of Blockade Runner is space combat. Mm -hmm. Stakes are higher. So if you screw up, you don't just simply regenerate. You regenerate and have to buy all your cargo again. So yeah. watch out for that. Sick. Do you know what would be really cool as well is if they could make the, the, the whatever the blockade is happening, if they could make that space station lawless and have this criminal outlet that put in the blockade, make them on there as well. So when you land and you have to go and fill your ship with cargo, there's AI on there that you have to FPS fight through, right? So you land, then you have to fight your way through the station to the terminals where you can then load up your ship, fight your way back to your ship, get on board, fly off and fight your way out. So there's a bit of FPS as well. That would be really cool. And Maker, yeah, I agree. This is the first PU event. I'm genuinely... I mean, I do like other PU events that are there. Xeno Threat excluded. <laughs> Whilst I enjoy Xeno Threat, it doesn't work properly. But this is sick. This is really cool. Dev, I've been playing this entirely by myself up till now. We're going to be going through some play tests soon, so we'll be able to experience the mission properly. But cool. thus far, I've been playing it solo with a ship that can both fight and transport. That kind of worries me. The Cutlass Black. Nice. The best ship for everything. <laughs> kind of worries me. 
that they've only had one person test this and they've announced it. So that kind of worries me. While we learned that missions like Data Heist don't shouldn't have been announced give yet, surely. more ways to play, they also give mission designers more tools to play with. That like every other aspect of Star Citizen, global events are continuously evaluated and refined and occasionally rebuilt and replaced when needed. And that Blockade Runner is just that, meant to replace the former Nine Tails lockdown before the end of this year. Now, don't forget that there's just three weeks until CitizenCon 2953, the now two-day event emanating from the Los Angeles Convention Center, where you'll get the biggest concentration of Star Citizen info, technology, features, visuals, and more, all beamed into your brains via Twitch. Cool. Or if you're there in person, by just following Mark Gibson around all day and asking <laughs> about his Hercules voice. I can still hear it when I look at the C1. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Thank you for letting us share the process of game development with you. Thank you, Jared. We'll see you all here next week. Cool. Cool. I like it, chat. I like it. The the block the data running thing. So far, yeah. Like I said, I'm I'm a big fan of the space combat, so um that element uh works pretty well for me. Uh buying and selling cargo is fine too. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that part. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like I like I like all the elements. I like buying and selling cargo. I like the ship combat. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in. I'm all in. Yeah, the the data running thing is a bit meh. It's cool. It's it's nothing really new. But this PU event is awesome. This blockade runner, really really cool. This month's ship giveaway is the RSI Scorpius, courtesy of CIG themselves. Thank you so much, CIG, for supporting the channel. You the goats. Here is how you can enter. Like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and comment below CIG love. All one word, just like you are seeing on screen right now. This will gain you one entry. However, if you wish to heighten your chances of winning and gain some more entries, this is how you can. Firstly, you could become a channel member, which will double your chances of winning. And this is for any tier you choose, regardless of cost. Secondly, you can head over to my socials such as Instagram, TikTok, Threads, and Twitter. Links can be found in the description. Find the post about the RSI Scorpius giveaway and follow the instructions on that post. Each platform is one extra entry and of course completely free. Entries will close on the 5th of October and the winner will be announced on the 9th of October on my live stream here on YouTube. Best of luck and I'll see you in the verse.